and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I am a chemist who loves makeup. And in today's video, we are gonna talk all about powder sunscreen. If they're effective, how much you need to use, and if you can use these as your sole form of sunscreen. And if you wanna see more videos like this or ingredient-focused makeup reviews, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you will always be notified when I upload a new one. And with that, let's jump into the video. In short, powder sunscreens do work, but the basis that they are tested on for SPF is two mg per centimeters of skin. But most people use a lot less powder than this. An image from Cosmetic Dermatology Principles and Practices, the second edition by Leslie Bauman, showed the amount of powder sunscreen you actually need is quite a bit. It's the equivalent to like a stack of quarters powder, and the equivalent that most people use of the sunscreen powder is the equivalent to a stack of pennies. And that's a drastic difference in terms of amount used per amount you're supposed to use to get the full coverage. And this is just because how it's applied, there's powder going everywhere. I personally would not use this as my sole form of sunscreen. I live in California. I get sun all the time. So this is not a good option for somebody like me. And this brings me to another point I wanted to talk about. So the FDA doesn't really authorize the marketing of powder sunscreens. Since 2012, because of this user error and application, like we said with the amount that people apply, the risk of inhalation of the sunscreen because it is a powder, and because your face isn't a flat surface, so when you're applying the powder, you may not get it into all the nooks and crannies of your face. So I was really confused about this because I see a ton of powder sunscreens on the market. I even have a powder that specifies sun protection of SPF 45. So I'm thinking maybe it's referred to because it's referred to as a mineral powder that also has sunscreen properties. Maybe that's one of the reasons why is because it doesn't market itself as a sunscreen in particular. And on the packaging, they also say use with other forms of sun protection. So maybe that's how they can do it. That's the only way I can think of how this would be allowed. So I also wanted to bring up that the FDA has been issuing warning letters to companies that are marketing sunscreen pills or dietary supplements that are claiming to have SPF effects. That basically means the companies try to market that these provided sun protection without actually any sort of evidence and sunscreen is considered a drug. The FDA has a lot of control over them and this warning letter from the FDA tells them that they need to stop selling them. An FDA warning letter is a huge tarnish on a company and you can come back from it but it's not going to look good. These warning letters are online for everybody to view. You can go look up FDA warning letters for whatever year and it'll pop up. So overall, as for powder sunscreens, I would not use these as my only protection from the sun. I have one that I got for free at Gem Beauty. I pretty much only use it as like a to-go like touch-up powder because it is in like a nice convenient packaging with a little brush and the SPF is just an added bonus. So this product would probably be good for someone who gets oily throughout the day and needs to powder up, but I would recommend using cream sunscreens because you're more likely to get a better coverage using those and really protect your skin. And if you want to see more videos like this, please don't forget to click the like button and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that way you never miss when I upload a new video. And with that, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!